Somebody roll the weed. Oh, it's my song. Hey, yeah. I want to get higher than a motherfucker. Ooh, as I read these red stories. Uh huh. Gonna read some red stories. Uh, today I'm gonna read from my. Am I the a hole? Am I the a hole? Am I the a hole? Sector of Reddit. Hit it. Another episode of Conversations with the Priestess. First and foremost, I want to thank you, say thank you to everyone for the birthday wishes and the birthday love. Um, I really did make a big to do on social media about my birthday. I made some posts um, and I did that for a reason. Um, I try not to make a big to do about my birthday on social media for personal reasons, but this birthday is kind of sacred to me. Um, and we're going to read some Reddit stories in a little bit, but this is sacred to me um, because I'm blessed to live to see 38. As many of you all know, this is Women's His International Women's History Month, but also trans women are women and we are a part of women's history trans women are killed at alarming rates and the average lifespan for trans women um, is around 35 years old and this is why i preach and teach about my trans life um over the last couple of weeks i've dedicated myself to self-care because it's been a lot um, on the job with transitioning into another sector but also i've had some moments of gender dysphoria that really did a number on me but also i'm still in the process of grieving the end of a friendship that happened at the end of january and it's 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 been a great transition not just from facial femme which has been i'm um, about going into the six months um it it it's been a great transition mentally emotionally holistically for me and I've met new people that I'm showing, I can already see that we're going to be cool friends, but also re-navigating life. So I'm not going to get into the details, but just know in coming episodes, I'm going to be talking about some topics. But until then, y'all going to be getting some Reddit stories um, and I want to be posting more. So I'm going to, I'm working out the kinks in the schedule. But without further ado, let's read these Am I the Asshole stories. Reddit is my motherfucking guilty pleasure. And uh, outside of um, reviewing Buying Naked, which you can get on my OF um, and on my Fansly, check the tree link in the show notes and in the description box wherever you're watching and or listening to this podcast. I have bonus content there. But child, look here. I have been reading Reddit stories and uh, child getting my life because the nerve of some people. So let's go ahead and read some Am I the Asshole stories. First up, <clears throat> first up on Am I the A-hole, I'm refusing to talk to my father and spoiled sister who wants to walk down the aisle with me in white. Hell motherfucking no. <laughs> Hell motherfucking no. Why in the hell would your sister want to walk down the aisle with you on your special day in white? That's some entitled bullshit. Let's read this. Growing up, my sister, 29 female, and I never seemed to get along. It was always a competition with her, and she found a way to have it her way all the time. Because I was a pushover and my parents were always busy. So they just assumed I didn't mind. Number one baby um why didn't your parents come to you and have a conversation why didn't they intervene like I, I have questions for the parents even now once a boy she liked asked me out and because i knew she liked him i turned him down and even offered to introduce him to my sister i understood that she would be a little upset but instead she goes around our school and family friends talking about how i threw myself on the guy she likes and what a uh harlot I was when I graduated high school I got into a pretty good college on a half scholarship I posted about it on my Instagram and I even got treated to a fancy dinner by my cousins all this while she was living still living with us and attended a community college after my parents persistence question 
your cousins threw you a dinner where are your parents in all of this like for real and i can speak from this experience i have dealt with being ignored by parental figures and have them do uh, things for other people's kids or my other uh siblings in the household well the people i called my siblings and child that's that's a jacked up situation back to this reddit story when she found out about the post and dinner she went crying hot as i figured to my dad who always favored her and took her side and threatened to not pay for my college for flexing and being ungrateful there would also be times where he'd buy her whatever she wanted for her birthday like a new phone or diamond jewelry but if my mom or relatives bought me anything for my birthday he'd make a face and mumble to himself about how much money i waste for my 16th birthday my mom bought me a diamond necklace with my name on it my sister acted like she dropped it when i was away and damaged it by messing up the lock we tried returning it and getting it fixed after they quoted my mom a very high amount to get it repaired. My dad somehow forced my mom to just exchange the necklace into money for family reasons. Girl, family reasons. Fa Baby, I hope she went no contact with them. I hope she cut them complete off, which was really just to throw my sister a bigger 17th birthday party while he didn't even throw any party for my 16th birthday his reason you need to focus on your exams <gasps> i i just really want to know why the favoritism i just really want to know why the favoritism like this is she's your daughter as well both of them are your daughters like if you're a, a good parent you would treat them equally would you not let me get back into this because i got pissed off many years later i moved out took a student loan and got a job my 28 female fiance 29 male are getting married in may and i love him a lot oh congratulations baby oh my gosh oh i recently arranged a girl's trip to La to vegas for my bachelorette party with all my girls when i told my parents about this plan of course, my dad insisted I let my sister come with me, too, because a marriage in the family is a family event. My sister already booked tickets without even asking me if she could join us, which I found extremely annoying because I felt like I had my hand forced into allowing her to come. Girl, no. That is so wrong. That is so wrong. Boundaries, friend. Boundaries. Boundaries, friend. Like, girl, what the hell? No, 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 Matter of fact, y'all, I have merch on the store that says boundaries, friend, and make it make sense, Miriam. Y'all go ahead and cop that. It's some mugs. Go ahead and check that out. But anyway, like, for real, she helped herself on your bachelorette party, knowing you don't deal with her like that, knowing you don't like her like that. Uh-uh. I wish the trick would. Uh-uh. Nah. Mm -mm. after talking to my fiance about it i decided i would let her come on our trip also because she's been spamming my phone practically begging me on that trip we were also going to pick up my wedding dress and dresses for the bridesmaids during the shopping she was acting very rude and constantly commenting on the body shapes of other bridesmaids and making comments about how certain types of dresses would not look nice on them the disrespect the the disrespect honey she also picked the most cleavage showing dresses that I was not very comfortable with on my wedding. A few days after shopping, I found out from the store manager that we had two white dresses to be tailored. I was confused and asked her what she meant and she told me that one dress was the one I picked and the other one was a short lace mini white dress. Oh my God, no. You have to be some kind of self-absorbed sociopathic narcissistic bunghole to want to wear white on someone else's wedding day and still the attention away from them and their betrothal to their spouse that is disrespectful like i never understood people that want to impede on everybody else's time like why do you want to take the attention off of somebody else on their big day and make it about you girl you got problems go talk get some help honey that is jacked up I called up my maid of honor, my best friend, and she tells me that she saw my sister check out white dresses at the store. I called her up and asked if it was hers, and my dad joined the call. He said it was only fair if she also walked down the aisle. Why? 
Why is it fair that she walks down the aisle on her sister's wedding day? Girl, no, 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 no. Y'all wouldn't let her do it on her wedding day. So, uh, uh-uh. no, 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 ma'am. Because she was getting older and is still single and may not have the experience of doing it in her 20s. And as a good sister, it is only fair for me to want to do it with her as it shows our close sisterly bond. Number one, the OP's love life have nothing to do with her sister's love life. Number two, y'all are no, 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 this is some this is some ulterior motives here i told my bridesmaids and fiance about this and they were all shocked at my father's behavior my mom has been pretty quiet and about this whole situation but was also upset with my dad i informed some of my cousins and they all tried to talk to my dad about how that's a bad idea and he said that he won't let us do it at our decided venue we're doing it at our family vacation home in another state to keep costs low if we don't let her. So you want to ruin your daughter's special day because you want the golden child that for some reason y'all put above this child is given very much unplanned um, parenthood situation and they're angry about it. I don't know what the T is, but this is like evil behavior. And so back into this rated story, I never had big parties or celebrations. It was always my spoiled sister who had the big parties and gifts. I picked my family vacation house because it was my late grandmother's house that my dad now owns. My family and friends are offering to help us cover the cost of finding a bigger, nicer venue. But my mom is asking me to work it out with my father and sister who are refusing to talk to me because I'm being an egotistic bride. Okay. How when it's your day and you want things to be about you and your fiance and not your sister? What in the hell? Really? When I heard that, I got really mad and yelled at him for all his shortcomings as my father in my life and blocked both of them. His side of the family has been calling me nonstop to call me down and talk to them as well. Am I overreacting? Should I just talk it out and convince her to pick another dress? I'm going to say this now, baby. No, keep them blocked. And if some people don't show up to your wedding, it's going to hurt. But baby, fuck them people. Forget them people. Move on with your life, baby. They are trespassing on your special day. And that is so disrespectful to you and your fiance. For real. Edit. So a lot of people have been asking about this. So I thought I'll just mention it here. Growing up, like I think until I was a teen, we were in a very weird financial situation and money was tough. My sister and I were born back to back. And because of our short age gap, our parents being in their early 20s while entering parenthood, I always felt like I was the reason for our financial position i was more or less the unexpected unwanted child of it just as i thought just as i thought while my sister was playing wow wow i'm sorry op that you are going through this like for real i hope baby that like that you move on from those people like I, I don't get it. But y'all, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to go smoke something. Here's some church announcements for y'all, okay? What's up, my royal priesthood? Here's a talk to priestess moment for your church announcements. Many of us um, have dealt with toxic family members and we have dealt with loved ones that love to um, treat us in a way that we should not be treated. And we have gone no contact with them. I want to say congratulations on going no contact with them. Congratulations on putting yourself first. It is very, very, very appropriate to celebrate yourself and put yourself first. I too had to learn how to put myself first. And I do not regret it. In going no contact with toxic individuals and those that cause you harm, you learn more about yourself than you ever knew, but you also learn a lot more about them. The healing process is not going to always be easy, but baby, you're going to make it through. Now go ahead and rejoice, baby, because you got rid of the sickness, the rid of the infection that fucked up your life. Go ahead and grieve. It's okay to cry sometimes. Go ahead and cry. But baby, make sure that you get the support and help that you need. Look at my show notes. Have betterhelp.com. Get the help that you need. Live, love, be free. 
let's jump back into the show. Okay. I'm diving right back into these rated stories, honey. Because it's about to get sad, 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 sad. Yeah. So this next one is giving very much red pill incel by the title. My husband wants a girlfriend, so I filed for a divorce. Y'all already know how this is going to go. While attempting to refinance our house, I discovered my husband was sending money to another woman. After more digging into his business finances, I discovered he has taken this woman on two trips out of the country as well. While he left me home with his kids. After the second trip out of the country, they decided to call it quits. After I caught them in the hotel together. That's right, honey. Bust them where they doing the act. Three months later, he was asking to add a second wife, which is illegal in the States. We've been together six years, by now married three, and now he wants to add another woman to our relationship? He portrayed like he was this monogamous loving husband in the beginning, but now he claims he's poly, and I would be selfish not to do what makes him happy. Nah, he's not poly, he's just selfish, and that's not, not how it works. If you want to be monogamous, non-monogamous rather, with your mate, that should have already been a conversation. Or if you find out that you wanted to add another party, you should have had that conversation and sat down instead of just bringing it on her and cheating like that. Because that's jacked up. But what you really did was use poly and non-monogamy as the excuse for your cheating, which is trash. Honey, child, go on ahead and do what you need to do and divorce him. Mm -mm -mm. This is the third marriage for both of us. He knows I divorced my previous two husbands for cheating. He's adamant on being with this other woman in addition to me, even though I don't agree. I move out of the house and I filed for a divorce. The problem now is everyone is asking me to give the marriage another chance. Baby, you don't have to give the marriage another chance. Forget all of that. It's like they're saying it's my fault because I was the one who moved out. I raised his kids the last six years and I'm the only mom his youngest daughter knows. Their mom isn't in their life. She cries saying, I know dad messed up but can you come back home the kids godparents are marriage counselors through the church and are asking me to give the marriage another chance that's the problem right there they're thinking in terms of the for better of words yes but also baby we got to throw the bible out the window because that's some old archaic fairy tale nonsense baby that man is not treating you right you done been through this before you know what you desire baby move on it's okay to move on honey move on from that man and do what you gotta do don't let them church folks talk you into nothing this is the second woman he's cheated on me with and has apparently been cheating the whole six and a half years we've been together. Girl, I am so sorry for you, hon. How many chances do I need to give him? He is saying he loves me and wants to work things out with me, but still wants both of us. I was a stay-at-home mom, so I think he's just going to miss a clean house, clean clothes, personal driver for the kids, and in home, canoogling since the other partner is out of state. We have a 60 day waiting period before we can finalize the divorce. At this point, I'm second guessing myself if I'm doing the right thing. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to give him another chance and finalize divorce? No, you are not, honey. No, you are not. Cut him complete off and move on. And if you got to cut some family members off, baby, do what you got to do, honey. I don't understand that. Like, for real. Like, you just going to cheat like that. And expect me to just go along with it all hunkadori like everything is okay. Hell not, nah, dot afraid not. No. Mm-mm. Baby, you are not the asshole. Just go ahead and move on. And I hate that you found out like that. People don't understand when you lie like that and play with people's emotions, that comes back on you. That comes back on you and you will never be able to recover from that. It makes no sense. Sir, you could have already had that. So you was already cheating on her the whole time y'all was together. You didn't even have the conversation to give her a choice. Baby, you are not the a-hole. Oh, uh-uh. Mm-mm. Not the a-hole. The nerve. Am I the a-hole for not covering up for my dad after he gave our dog chocolate? Okay, now this one is short and sweet. He wanted to share some chocolates with our dog. Would you automatically should know you cannot give a dog chocolate people you cannot give a fucking dog chocolate you cannot i'm gonna say it again you cannot give animals chocolate you cannot give a dog chocolate i'm gonna say it again you cannot get a dog chocolate they say if you repeat it long enough it'll manifest you cannot give a dog chocolate 
when I-18 male warned him that chocolate is toxic for dogs and could seriously harm her. My dad brushed it aside. He said that these are, are expensive Swiss chocolates, so it's probably safe. Sir, it's chocolate. It's chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Chocolate. That means all chocolate. I looked at the box and told him it's even worse since it's high cocoa and the cocoa is the dangerous part. Then I went to take a shower. When I returned, he had fed her the chocolate. We did get her to the vet in time. She threw up and her heart rate went way up, but has since recovered. At first, dad wanted to blame me for it, but I told mom what really happened. He was really upset at me for this, saying he already had to pay the bills and that mom would have been much less angry if I told her since I did it just sorry, I did it since I'm still 18. So you wanted your child to lie. Like he gave the doll chocolate when you did. Sir, sir, are you well? Are, make it make sense, Miriam. Make it make sense, Miriam. Like for real. Again, boundaries, friend. The OP said do not give a dog chocolate because it's toxic to them. You fucking knew this. He also told me it's my fault for not being more insistent and warning him about what could happen if a dog eats chocolate. Sir, just take accountability that you gave the dog fucking chocolate. Like, sir. Uh-uh. I'm just reading some comments. Somebody said this key point. Your dad is a baby in a grown-up's body. You told him not to give the dog chocolate. He argued. You explained specifically that this chocolate was bad for the dog. He gave them chocolate. He gave her chocolate. The dog was ill and there were medical expenses. What part of that is what part of that is not on you, Dad? No way on earth you should have taken the blame. I'm glad your mother was angry and didn't brush it off. Your dad should face the consequences of his actions, and you certainly should not. I agree. The dad is an idiot. Someone else says, I truly despise those I know better men when in fact almost never know better and are just being stubborn and macho. You are not the a-hole, but your father is a massive one for multiple reasons. I agree. I agree. And I'm going to leave it alone in here. says, not the a-hole. Your father is dangerously stupid. I would even have done that at five. He's a full grown man. It's pathetic. Probably shouldn't ever trust him with any animal, let alone an actual baby or child. Well said. Those type of people that will easily disregard your boundaries of safety for your child or your fur baby. Baby, you can't trust them because they won't respect you. Honey, you are not the asshole. But your father is a massive one and he needs help. Ciao. My last Reddit story. Okay. Am I the a-hole for embarrassing my boyfriend's parents? I don't think I am. Oh, this is about to be good. My boyfriend inherited some money from his uncle. His father needed some money, so my boyfriend gave him access to his account. We found out that his father took four times the amount he was supposed to take. Taking someone's money like that and lying and tricking them is unacceptable. He almost took everything. Wow, that is jacked up. That, parents are the worst sometimes. It isn't my boyfriend's money. It isn't about my boyfriend's money and how it will benefit our lives. I have a job and I can compensate for that. I couldn't care less. This is about my boyfriend being used by his parents even as an adult. He feels obligated to go along with it because they are his parents. He is bad at confrontations. He might stand up for a stranger with no ounce of fear. Just bravery. I've seen that. But he fails to do that for himself. My boyfriend has withdrawn the rest of the money. He works with cash only, no cards anymore. This week, I was having my sister and her family at our place when his parents came. We didn't know they'd be coming. They asked for more money. How dare they? How dare they? My boyfriend first ignored them and then started saying that he couldn't do that. He needed the money for himself and he didn't say us because they don't like me. That's jacked up. I, I hate that these toxic ass parents do this. Like, And they wonder why their kids go non-contact with them and they, they go on with the rest of their life alone. My boyfriend was getting sick of this and I was getting sick of this. I told him they should leave and that we wouldn't give them any more money unless it was $10. My four-year-old nephew laughed. 
The little guy laughs at anything. I guess they felt embarrassed because a four-year-old laughed at them. They said that I am having their son as my puppet, which makes me an ass. I don't think I'm an ass. They think I, a laundry manager, is able to turn their son into a puppet. They felt to see the mature guy he is. Yes, he's not perfect, but he's no puppet. Girl, that is that is trash. And it's given that his parents probably exploited him for their own use and did all they could to make his life a living hell as a child because he didn't. I don't get parents, but kudos to the uncle for looking out for nephew. No, you are not the a-hole, but your parents, on the other hand, try fucking people. So y'all, I'm out. Y'all live, love, and be free. Thank y'all again for staying with me. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me, share, leave a comment, leave a review, live, love, and be free. Smooch ass.